Hey guys, Miru here, and a while back I uploaded my Samsung Galaxy S9 impressions video, and this is the full review. The Samsung S9 and S9 Plus are Samsung's first entries into the 2018 smartphone battle, and it's a pretty strong start for Samsung in some categories, and not so strong in some other categories. But if I had to sum it up in one line, it would be, skip this great phone. So we'll kick things off with the design. The S9 pretty much has the exact same design on the front of the phone as the S8. Same display size, same top and bottom bezels. Around the back, however, there are a few changes. The fingerprint reader is now positioned under the camera, so it's a bit easier to reach than the S8. And this actually makes quite a lot of difference. The display up the front is also the same as last year, and it is still just as amazing. So no complaints here. Moving on to performance, the phone is quite fast, but Samsung tends to put heavy skins on top of stock Android, which ends up being dead weight for the CPU, and it's pretty much the same case this time. But even with these heavy skins, the phone is still quite fast, although not as fast as stock Android or the iPhone 10 either, but there's no complaints here. The S9 and S9 Plus are still just as pricey as the S8 and S8 Plus, the base models coming in at $1,199 and $1,349. And now the main highlight with these phones are the dual aperture cameras. And this is the first time in any smartphone that you are able to manually switch the aperture setting of your camera. The S9 can alternate between the f2.4 and f1.5 aperture settings, which is quite impressive and can come very handy when there is a lack of light. Now, yeah, cameras in the Google Pixel 2 and the iPhone 10 have good low light quality, but those cameras only have an f1.7 aperture. Samsung's S9 has 1.5, which is a lot bigger than the 1.7, which is letting in more light, which means better low light camera. But even with this fancy new camera, the S9 photos seem to always be just a little, just a little bit overexposed. And the S9 isn't really that much better at taking photos than the Google Pixel 2 or even the iPhone 10. But on top of that camera, the S9 can shoot 960 frames per second at 720p. Samsung's not the first to do such a high frame rate video, but they've introduced it in this new phone anyway, along with 4K at 60 and 4K at 30 frames. But the, there doesn't seem to be a 4K at 24 frames per second. No complaints here anyway. But overall, I think you should skip this phone. And I know it sounds weird, but just hear me out. Now don't get me wrong here, the phone is a great phone, and I like it for the same reason that I loved the iPhone 10. iPhone 10 and Face ID was futuristic. It was literally the future of where phones are heading right now in our pockets. And the S9 does the same with its dual aperture camera. It is the next step that smartphone cameras are gonna take in the path to possibly replacing our DSLR cameras. But, and here's the but, Samsung's futuristic camera isn't really that impressive. Now the actual mechanism to make this dual aperture happen in such a small space is quite impressive, but the camera itself isn't. Now I need to be careful how I word this, but Samsung's dual aperture setting is only triggered automatically when the light level falls below 100 lux, which in itself is quite low. But if you want to manually control which setting is used, you have to head over to Pro Mode where you can change the aperture but also other things like the ISO, shutter speed, exposure and so on. And now it's really to be questioned how many people will, when taking a photo, head over to Pro Mode and then tap the aperture setting to see if f1.5 is any better than the f2.4 and then take the photo. Apart from a few tech geeks like me, or some very camera enthusiastic person using the Samsung Galaxy S9, nobody else will really bother with going over to pro mode, changing the aperture, and then taking the photo. Now, everybody else will only ever find out that there was a f1.5 camera being used when the Samsung software switches to it. And that's where the problem really lies, because now that it's the software which decides when the f1.5 is going to be used, the Samsung camera isn't really special anymore. It's just another camera that can adjust the amount of light coming in. And you can already do that on the Google Pixel and the iPhone 10 through software. So if I had to say it in one sentence, it would be the Samsung S9 camera is special, but not special, if that makes any sense. And another reason to skip this great phone is that it's still very much the beginning of the year. In some time, OnePlus will release their new phone, the OnePlus 6, and then Apple will probably release their iPhone 11. 
and then OnePlus might come out with their OnePlus 6T, and then Google will come out with their Google Pixel 3. And even though none of these phones are rumored to have the same dual aperture setting as Samsung, some of them will probably have an even better camera without the dual aperture. Samsung will also release their Note series, so that's going to have the dual aperture setting. And you can be certain that all of these phones will be much better overall than the Samsung Galaxy S9. So there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's great, but I say you skip it. And that's all for this time. And as always, have a great, great life.